Let me add in, John, I think you would have skill levels from top to bottom, from your physicists dealing with the reactor cores and balancing out all of that that you have to do, all the way down to your uh, blue collar workers who normally just do the pipe fittings and handling the regular work. I've toured all kinds of power plants all over the world, nuclear plants, and you have your hard hat guys, but you also have your guys who have to deal with the reactor fuels. And in this case, you have hydrogen involved too which on site is going to definitely be a little bit volatile as far as, and that's the problem John and I have been trying to examine is the volumes you're dealing with here and how you can process those volumes. And we'll, we'll come to that point where we'd be handling hydrogen, and that's, that's a totally different animal. This is the site where the Sassol plant was built. Now just keep an eye on this road here and how it bends up there, because there. This is the world's largest coal to liquids plant and very successful and you know, continues to turn out a quality product that uh, civilian um, aviation, military aviation, military uh, apparatus use this product from Sassol. It's a marvelous accomplishment for South Africa and they intend to grow it out further. Um, and I've met with Sassol here, and I met with Sassol in South Africa two weeks ago. I met with their representatives and described this process that we're talking about now. It's also one they can adopt. I think their, their problem is that they should be using nuclear power as their heat source um, at this type of facility, and it would cut down on their carbon signature. My fear in the climate change discussion is that South Africa is going to be painted as the devil of climate um, um, carbon dioxide emissions because they just got a loan for four new, for four coal plants and that only represents a tenth of what they need over the next ten years. They're going to be coming back to the world markets to build more coal plants. My object is to back some of that carbon dioxide out, whether it's this method or with nuclear power plants. How can we be part of the Kyoto Protocol? What's that? How can we be part of the Kyoto Protocol? Well, that, I guess that's dependent on me. Uh, right now, nuclear power doesn't qualify under the Kyoto Proto Protocol as an offset. So we need to get that changed. The developing nations want to be paid to not do what we did, and that is grow an industrial sector using coal. If you turn nuclear into an offset, I think you can generate a lot of money from that um, using the carbon offset, and that's what we're working on trying to do. So I think you can get, convince the um, United Nations that this is a way where you can generate money in the world market with the technologies and still be able to pay the developing nations based on that. The last question. Yeah. Since the military wants this, could want this, what is the threat of terrorists? Well, and that's why we wanted the military involved. It would be on a reservation. There would be ten of them, and I would, I would love to see terrorists rarely go and attack a military base. They'll fly something into civilians or attack civilians, but they will not attack a military base. And because this has so much on it, that's why we added the Defense Department component. I, I want to mention to you also that this Sassol complex is the world's single largest source of carbon dioxide. But it's a necessary part of converting their coal to oil. We want to add another component where this is the back end, and the front end is making electricity with coal, burned with oxygen, and then the reaction of carbon dioxide and hydrogen becomes the feedstock for this Sasol plant. So you ask, you know, who's doing what? We've already got the back end. It's solved. So is this something that South Africa came up with? Outside of Germany, Germany helped South Africa develop the plans and also the investment, but it's basically a technology that was 88 years ago developed by two German scientists. And that was to fund, that was to uh, push the um, German Nazi war machine. Well, when they well, couldn't on, get, yeah. when they couldn't get oil. They went coal to coal to oh. diesel fuel, yeah. and that's where this process came from. But see, see, so we, we got the back end, that's solid. All we gotta do is get the carbon monoxide down that road and into those plants. Uh, now, do we have any test case here in the United States that we can sort of turn a few screws and actually try this out? This is a power plant in the Crystal River in Florida. This is the nuclear, operating nuclear power plant here. And this is the operating coal burning power plant here. If you took one of those coal burning units, a very large one, 440 megawatts, okay, but it's, it was online in 1996, 
condemn it for the idea of making electricity and just use it for a, a laboratory, now you've got a nuclear reactor that with some changes could possibly develop the kind of temperature you would need to split that water. The oxygen then would go across the road and into that unit to burn the coal. The carbon dioxide coming out of the stack would come over to another place over here and we would have the conversion of carbon dioxide and hydrogen and the hydrogen coming off here and split that water. So then you've got carbon monoxide. So down here you would have a sasol thing. So we could actually find a power plant where the federal government could come in and say, okay, for the good of the nation's uh, military uh, security, we're going to condemn some property, we're going to pay you well, but we're going to condemn some property, we're going to make the changes, and we're going to find out if we can actually do this. It's not like we'd have to go out and find a greenfield project and build from the ground up. This is another, <coughs> perhaps a little simpler mechanism, and I won't spend any time on that. And I love this. This is, we talk about prognosticators, Jules Verne. Kind of sums it up for me. Yeah. Right to your congressperson. Question. Sir. Does the law of diminishing returns apply? Let me do a thermodynamic creep. I'll step out of the room. Does the entire energy input justify? The entire thermal Good. BTU output. Okay. Uh, and whether it's gasoline, okay. diesel fuel, okay. Yeah, uh, Where does that balance out? Okay, that, that's an excellent question.